Welcome back. Markets are mixed this morning ahead of another big day of earnings. The Dow Industrial is up 103, but look at the Nasdaq. It is negative now, down about seven points. American Airlines reported a double beat on earnings and revenue earlier this morning. That stock is up almost 3% right now. And we're looking ahead to uh, Snap later on today. American Express also out tomorrow. So we'll be watching that one in terms of uh, credit trends for consumers. Joining us right now is the Bonson Group Chief Investment Officer, Founder, and Managing Partner. He is the author of There's No Free Lunch, 200 and 50 Economic Truths. David Bonson is here. David, great to see you. Good to see you, Maria. Thanks so much for being here. How do you assess the macro story? Look, I think most people know that you have a slowing economy that is giving confusing data. There are certain things that don't look as bad as I think they're going to get. Manufacturing's okay. Industrial production's kind of fine. It's the employment data that confuses everyone. It, it should be worse, and it isn't yet. And then that's allowing the Fed to kind of keep going, to probably over-tighten, and then you end up kind of getting a hangover effect next year. Well, Steve, Steve, I mean, your group, the Committee for Growth, hosted um, Fred Smith, Mm -hmm. founder of FedEx, last night. What did he have to say? Yeah, I wanted to ask David about that because you were at that dinner Mm -hmm. last night. By the way, I love your book, uh, No Free Lunch. It's it's a must read for people. Um, But what Fred Smith said, Maria, was a couple things. One, he's really concerned just about not being able to hire enough workers, which you hear all the time. But the other thing that almost concerned me more, David, I want your reaction to this, is he said, the workers today just don't seem to have the same productivity yeah. of the workers before. And, and that seems like it's an incredible indictment of our education system, our colleges. They're not preparing workers for the new economy. You know, whenever there's someone who like struggles with uh, some problem in their life, there's always the person with the struggle and then the person who enables it or the people <laughs> right, enable right. it. The problem with our labor productivity is we're enabling this. Right. Our society is fine with workers either not working, leaving the workforce way too early not entering the workforce till too late, right. sleeping in their mom's basement till they're 30 years old, and this kind of stuff. Right. I think that the society needs to become less tolerant of this. Mm-hmm. And I don't just say this economically, although that's what we're talking about. It has a huge impact on a number of aspects in, in the yes. economy. But culturally, it's yeah. an awful development. Yeah, yeah you know, our buddy Larry Kudlow always says that it's it's also, it's good for people's health. It's good yeah. for people's well-being to have yeah. a purpose in life, get up in the that's morning right. and work. And Maria, we've got three or four million Americans who should be working today, we, yeah. we don't know where they are. And, and that's why we're focused on the participation rate when yeah, we exactly. get the jobs numbers yeah. out. And it's disturbingly low yeah. uh, right now. Jeff Bezos has joined other bank CEOs like Jamie Dimon and David Solomon with a gloomy outlook on the economy. He tweeted this yesterday. The probabilities in this economy tell you to batten down the hatches, David. Mm-hmm. So what, what do you want to tell clients and our viewers in terms of preparing for what could be a couple of curveballs coming at us? in 23. I always think it's interesting when these CEOs after nine months of difficulty start saying you have to get more defensive. You could almost think it's a contrarian indicator to some degree, but we tend to run defensively all the time. I mean, we just sort of underperform when everything's on fire and when Bitcoin's going to 70,000 and silly things like that. And so the general posture of being defensive, I agree with, but I don't know that it's true you want to be extra defensive because you've now had the bad news. From an investor standpoint, point, this is an eternal lesson. Markets lead before economic improvement comes. Mm. They'll start pricing this stuff in far in advance. And I think investors and investment professionals like myself and Leo have to be aware of that. So is, a, is this what this is, this little mini rally we're seeing? No, this okay. I, that's impossible to say. All if right. anything, I just think it's bond yields finding a top. Leo, jump in here. I want to look at some demand destruction, especially in housing. Mortgage rates hit 6.94% mm. yesterday. Mm-hmm. That was the highest level since 20 2020. This morning, we'll get the September existing home sales out at 10 a.m. But look, the housing market is a perfect example of the impact of these higher rates from the Fed. So I I often say it's not the number, it's the speed that it takes to get to the number. And so 7% interest rates looked wonderful when we were in the middle of a 40-year bull market in bonds and interest rates were falling when we hit seven. Now we're going the other way, but we're going too fast. We're trying to create a zero carbon emission economy too fast. We're moving interest rates very fast. Again, this is that great economic anomaly we we keep talking about. And it's speed. It shocks the consumer. And the interesting thing is the consumer has some strength. This is this is all cycle. And I think we're in this post-COVID malaise that we will come out. And I do think an economy pulling back, lower 401ks, lower housing prices as a, re, as a, re, uh, a result of these rapidly rising interest rates, 
folks are going to rethink their early retirement slash sleeping in my mom's basement yeah. um, future, and they're going to come to work. I, the, the I think one, this is a cycle. The one thing I'd say on the housing prices is everybody is hurt by higher food prices. Everybody is hurt by higher yeah. energy prices. People might want lower housing prices from an affordability standpoint. Yeah, yeah. The, the prices got too high, and younger generation kids, it's people's true. kids and grandkids right. couldn't get into a home. But again, the speed at which it's happened. But is, the mortgage yeah. payment now is a lot higher. Oh, yeah than it was. I mean, you've got people walking away from the home because now they're figuring mm-hmm. out that 7% mortgage rates mean several hundred dollars additional on a month-to-month month yeah. month basis. And it keeps people from trading up, too. They may have an ability to go into a bigger home, but they're like, I'm not leaving a 2.5% mortgage yeah. to go to a new 7%. Of course, there's yeah. no refinancing now on uh, homes, none. too. So. Mm-hmm. And just one final point with, you know, San Francisco Federal Reserve Bank says that a lot of that increase in housing prices over the last three years has been attributable to work from home. People relocating and focusing on having bigger homes or homes in better locations because they are working from home. Do you agree with that assessment or do you think a lot of it was just fueled by QE, you know, low rates? It, it, low rates. I think that the Fed saying that is actually quite funny because yeah. the yeah. Fed yeah. caused it and, yeah. and I think they know it. Yeah. David, it's great to see you this morning. Good to see you, Thanks so much. David Bonson joining us. Quick break in the news.